what is going on guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i am going to quickly look at a particular request from one of my subscriber so currently um i have this um so i have a comment saying stating that please i need that i read and saw a lot of documents on the internet but i can't find actually what i need my scenario is how I can write AL code to create a continuous integration patch between Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central and an external sales system via API with authentication type not basic, right? So she said specifically, I want to achieve the following post insert customer in and sales invoice created in the external sales system and import them into business central get item details from business central to external system sales system sorry i would greatly appreciate if you could help me with that used http client data type all right so this is the request and there are various ways in which we can achieve um, the specific the pop um, solution right so uh, when we work with apis or when we work with integration with dynamics there are different ways at which we can achieve um, this so i i i feel like um for this tutorial i i am going to show you the different types of ways in which we can tackle um, this set of scenario right if you're new to my channel please subscribe to my channel i offer business central development um, tutorials i also once in a while touch the functional parts which i think um, is the most um, requested part in business central right so if you're currently new or if you're an existing washer and you've not subscribed please consider subscribing today um currently my channel has 18 subscribers for this particular year which is yeah, which I'm cool with because I, I haven't been honestly um, uh, consistent with my uploading but right this is fine and my goal for the year was a thousand and we are still currently five months for the year and I know a lot can be achieved um, towards the end of the year so um, please do subscribe like share you know my channel needs it all right so let's move into this video like i said we have three different ways in solving this particular solution so because she has explicitly stated that she wants she wanted http client so i am going to make this tutorial a part tutorial so i have actually recorded this video before but i ended up deleting it um, by mistake so that is why i am currently re reshooting this particular video all right, so let's move to our development environment. As you can see, I have already made so many definitions to this project. All right, so uh, in order for me to bring you to to my to uh, my thought process, and this is what uh, my thought process is. So we have a destinated api we want to digest right so we, we want to be able to take sales uh, current sales from this system so that we can update the business central and there are other ways to do this there are different ways to do this the first one uh, would need interaction um, by the front user that's probably clicking on a button to get that update or we can also run it using job queue so we can set a timer saying okay every five five minutes or every 10 10 minutes please do go fetch um, any new data you find on the external sales api right so the other achievement the other um main purpose for this video is how we can make use of authentication type you know the if you watch my previous tutorial on apis or on integrating with business central you would see it's a direct um, get resource without any authentication method so for this video we are going to make use of authentication tool and also we are going to be making use of this specific um, resource so um, i signed up for squarehub.com um, 
it's more like a sales type of application and um, I highly recommend you use this and you register so that you can follow along with this tutorial. So I currently created an account with the developer squareup.com and they allowed me to create a sandbox environment in which I can carry out my basic authentication tool. As you can see, I have what we call access token, which is currently hidden, and this is what I am going to use to access whatever resource that the Square Up can provide. So on my other tab, I have a sample pay uh, payload uh, which enables me to be able to fetch the customer list from the Square API, right? So if you can see at my right hand side, I have a request template. Let me expand this. Um, it means whenever I visit this link, um, this link is expected that I have an header that contains the square version and also an authentication which has a barrier with this authentication code right so this is exactly what we want to do we want to access the list of customer but we can't do that if we do not have an authorized barrier key and this is what makes the previous video tutorial different from this right so if I have the right tools and um, I should be able to get a response and the response should um, have this sort of value um, so I should be able to get an object of array with um, each object having its unique ID the created art update art given name family name so basically these are data I want to fetch from the external API right so the first thing you want to do is you want to check the documentation of the API you want to digest if um, they have a way of um, accessing them using this authentication tool. As you can see, I'm using my token key to access um, this payload, right? Because I said I have already made this video before and mistakenly deleted it. That is why I have this structure already. So what did I do here? What I did was to create a page extension. I only want to create an action button on the customer list extension, right? So what I did was I called the code units that I developed and I referenced it within the action that whenever I click this, whatever program is within this fetch data should run and if i come to the code unit called fetch data uh, you can see it's just a normal template code units and fetch customer list right so if you see within the function i have fetch data so i reference a client the client being um let's just look at the client as your browser so i want to run whatever http request i use make use of the client and the client is referenced to an object called http client right so i also declared a url that would hold the link to visit and also a result whenever i get a result you know somewhere i can dump those results so i created um uh, results place order and also we have array data so array data also takes all the value of an array right 
so we have a response which is very important if you watch my previous video i explained what it means so http response is whenever i use my clients to get a particular um, link so whatever result it brings i want to save it using this http response message client content this is after requesting whatever thing both the header the status i want to save everything inside the client content so i have a json object to represent the objects which we are expecting from the api and also a json array json token as i explained whenever we want to get a specific information from either a json object or a json array we use a json token to reference that whatever result comes after this please dump the result inside the json token so i also created a boolean called is successful to check the status of my connectivity if it is successful if it is not i want to um, echo out a specific error so the same thing i also want to have a reference to the id i will be getting at the end of the day the name the nickname email notes complaint and i also created a reference to the index which i'll use for my looping of array so this is more like index like what index am i currently on exactly so for the name nickname company name so so as it doesn't look like a rocket science so if i expand this you see i have notes email address nickname these are the information the result i will be getting at the end of the day so i wanted to create a variable that holds those information right so what i did here now is the first thing i did was what url do i want to visit as you can see earlier i referenced that i want to visit this connect.squaresandbox.com version 2 i want to get the customers list so what i did was that i cleared the client in case they were an existing content in the client i want to clear them so that i can start afresh so the next thing i did was i said client.default header dot add so under the default header i want to add a new header to it as you can see square version the same way we have seen it from the api request we have the square version and the authentication i also represented that respectively so this is the most important one this is the authentication version 2 so i'm seeing authorization barrier equals you know so exactly the way it is from the api endpoint so this is just like my user id that gives me access to the customers list so the first thing i did was i said is successful equals the client dot get because i'm currently using a get method i also want to retrieve whatever data is currently present on the customers list so i'm saying if the client dot get it so and this return a boolean is that true or false so i am saying if it gets this url please dump whatever response you see put the response inside this variable called response right so now i'm also checking if it is false is successful is it successful is it yes or no true or false if it is not successful so i'm saying kindly check the url probably you have misspelled the url or you're putting a wrong url to the api right so the next one was for me to check the response if the response status is 200 that means it was successful if it is not then i want to say api return so i want to see the status of the current api if it is two, um, 500 internal server error you know if it's either of those error status so to get more of error status you can search online http error status you see a ton of information as regarding that status so the next thing i did was the content client i also cleared that because i want to put whatever content i have gotten from this client you are dot get i want to um where is it uh, from this client dot get whatever response I have gotten I want to put the content inside this client's content So the next thing I did was I am now putting 
all the content inside a variable called results so from that result i am using my json object to read from that result so while i'm reading from the result this is how the result is going to look like sorry that's another video um the result is going to look like this so the th the result is going to house this json of um, of array objects so that's exactly what was done there so i'm now saying from the JSON you have read, since I'm reading from this result, I'm now saying if you find a customer, then save the content inside this JSON token, right? Then I said this JSON token, I want to write the result of that array because this is what we are going to get at the end of the day. This is it. Since we said if it sees this, then we know the result expected is an array of objects. So we are now seeing we should store whatever value it gets into this array data right so from the array data automatically we know that this is an object so we looked through it in case we have so many lists of customers in that array so the first thing we did was we cleared this token because it was used for another purpose here so we cleared it so we can use it as a new token to get the first index so the first one will be index zero so whatever result it get from index zero we want it to save it inside this json token and then we pass the json token dot as array as object then dot get the id and also save the result inside the result token so it's same thing we did here so the last thing we did was to just message um, whatever value we are gotten the ID the name the nickname the email the company name so we are saving whatever value we get inside this um, variable here right so basically that's it then we put an else if um, sorry so if you if you can see the first condition here so we have a condition called if this if it gets this customer objects you know so if i collapse this you can see that is when we have the else then we say that means it, it didn't see any object called um, customer exactly and we put a respective else statement right so um that's about it for this part so the next part so i wanted to make this in a part one part two part three um, part four so i can narrate so many different scenarios for this video so the next one we are going to actually use this information we got here to update the customer list in the business central so at the front end we should be seeing a result like like this this is the customer list if i come and say click on the customer list i should be able to see that the customer name is city with nickname of palito email address palito city at gmail.com from company called palito vt as seen on the api results right so if we see the complaint's name company name is palito vt the notes i have the email address you can see nickname and then the name so you see whatever information we got out of this was the same information we are expected to see so i believe this is the end of the part one i am going to be uploading the part two i do not know when i should be able to upload it this week by god's grace so um thank you for watching so far please do subscribe uh like share and the target you remember the target is a thousand subscribers so let's let's make this happen so thank you so far for your support it's really 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 thriving and the channel is actually really growing with um, little or no effort i'm still seeing um, a lot of turn up and i really appreciate your support so far thank you so much and to the next time